Bad Saint first opened in DC's Columbia Heights neighborhood in 2015. The restaurant's namesake was inspired by the first Filipino settlement in the United States, St. Malo, Louisiana. And that inspiration speaks to their food. It reflects the owner's experiences as Americans and allows them to honor their Filipino roots by highlighting lesser known regional dishes. Bad Saint doesn't take reservations. So each night, hopeful diners begin lining up as early as 2.30 in the afternoon and wait until the restaurant begins service at 5.30. I'm with my new friend Don. He's the first person in line today. How does that feel? Oh man, it feels great. All right, we got here around about 2.30, 2 2.45. You seem prepared. Have you done this before? Uh, at least about 100 times. Okay, so like most of the time I do it for friends and sometimes I do it for myself. I have people come from London, Yugoslavia, Middle East. How familiar are you with Filipino food before eating at Bad Saint? Oh, not at all. Yeah. I had the noodles with mushrooms. Uh-huh. It was a spicy dish. Yeah, yeah. I'm not really a noodles guy, and I don't like mushrooms. The way that they sauteed the mushrooms yeah. almost tasted like it was meat. So it was. I think that was a vegetarian meal. Yeah. It was really awesome. <laughs> cool. Thank you so much for talking to me. No I problem. I mean, we'll keep talking because we're in this line. I mean, for me, I think Bad Saint was the first time I heard people lining up for Filipino food. And I thought that was a really big deal. And I was like, what? That's like crazy. How did the concept of Bad Saint come to be? What you experience as Bad Saint is really sort of an amalgam of chef's vision and love for Filipino food and his interest in really highlighting regional cuisine, but also like highlighting his own personal experiences of Filipino food. It's very intimate. Yeah. And that's like one of the first things you notice because how many seats do you have here? 24. 24. Even though it's so tiny and even though a restaurant of this size might not have appealed to somebody else, but I think what we took away from it when we first saw it was that it felt really homey. Um, we wanted to convey that sense of like that special like Filipino brand of hospitality. Yeah. Yeah, I really relate to the going to someone's house. And you have to clarify, like, wait, are we related or are we right. not? Because right. you're not sure and right. it feels like home. We really thought very carefully about, like, how do you translate the warmth and the generosity of being hosted in someone's home to a restaurant setting? On any given evening, at least half the dining room has literally never had a bite of Filipino food in their lives. And to be feeding people, like, some people, their first bites of Filipino food, I feel like it's such, like, an honor and a privilege. Yeah. So we try to make it as um, demystifying and approachable as possible. Right now it looks like I won't have anything for two until about 8.45, 9.15. Genevieve just started seeing people and it's already pretty packed. Um, and there's still people lining up and people waiting to hear the time that they're going to sit down. Right here. 31 open. Oh my god. Okay, so next up, this is the Panuri Tong Ali Masak. So these are soft shell crabs. They're Chesapeake Bay blue crabs. The sauce that they're in is a spicy crab fat sauce um, with lime and cilantro. In different dishes, you see sort of like traces of chef's history. This is definitely a, a dish from like a Maryland kid, but not just crabs, like soft shell crabs. Like half the city goes insane when it's soft shell crab season. Yeah. So. Crab fat for me was a breakthrough. Like when I went to the Philippines last year, I had no idea there was a delicacy from, from my dad's hometown. Yeah, I didn't know that either. Yeah. So you had it in the Philippines, and then did you automatically know that you wanted to start using soft shell crab? Like how did you come well, up with it? Because I think it's a really good representation of you. Right. Well, you know, soft shell crabs are seasonal, like around this time. And being from Maryland, Maryland, I love crabs, and I know I eat it every year. So I wanted to do something besides crab cakes, mm -hmm. yeah. which everyone does in the city, I think. And I told myself I need to find a way to make this back at home. Yeah. I want to show the whole world that this is this is what regional Filipino food is. Yeah. 
I mean, if you don't like soft shell crabs, can we be friends? Did you go to the Philippines a lot as a kid? No, I did not. No. Yeah. Uh, last year was my first time going. Yeah, it was a uh, mind-blowing experience. Crazy. Yeah. You know, I've never been on a 20-hour flight. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as you get off that plane, there's Filipinos everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then um, I remember like just going to a roadside area and just like eating food, like, eating lechon or eating a like, tilapia with calamansi. The fact that you know you were learning their way of life. You know, I was born in Alangopo City. Uh, I've never been to Bacolo, never been to Cebu, never been to Pampanga. Yeah. Like I always want to know like what like what kind of food you were cooking. And my mom was my chef. Yeah. So she trained me the Filipino palate. Yeah. I and mean, that's, that's that's my go-to. Like when I'm like looking for new recipes. Hi. Here we have adobo sapo, whole crumbs covered in black garlic. Um, I'm sharing this meal with my crew because I like to keep them fed. This is my grand Scotty, which you already saw. Since you guys have to watch me eat, you get to watch my girl eat. You have us for breakfast? Oh, okay. No. Oh, please. Do not. Yeah. You guys, this, this restaurant is all about family. The shell's good. Uh -huh. I don't mind eating the shell at all. Oh yeah, you can also eat the shell. Get my own. This is braised chicken with coconut, turmeric, uh, ginger, and chili. What is the most important ingredient to this dish? Uh, I think it's the palapa. Yeah. The palapa is, is this native condiment that they use mm -hmm. in modern cooking. Yeah. Uh, it's just toasted coconuts with with a lot of chilies. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Mindanao palapa has sukaro, which is their native garlic. And here we have spring garlic, which is, is in season right now, actually. So we use that. I think the palapa is, is what makes it very modern now. And also using a lot of turmeric, uh, lemongrass, uh, which you'll find a lot in the south. It's, it's so close to Malaysia and Indonesia. Yeah. yeah. And the chilies, too. I think spicy food isn't as yeah. common. Like, you know, so the Thai chilies that we get here is like our version of the Laboyo chilies you'll find back at home. This is the pia para na manok. Uh, manok in Tagalog means chicken. This is kind of like a curry. So I'm gonna get a lot of this sauce. And this is really spicy, actually. <laughs> did you always know that you wanted to cook Filipino food? I did not know that. Yeah, so no. how did that, <laughs> did it just kind of happen? Or? Kind of gave up on culinary school and I was learning more working at restaurants. Yeah, that's. It was how I got my start. Uh, it was my mom that actually introduced me to this food four years ago. Uh, she just wrote some recipes for me and was like, hey, I have a recipe for kare kare, didn't go on, um, and I'm, I'm passing it down to you. So for me, it was just like, wow, you know, it's a big deal because uh, my mom is like the head cook of our family. Hearing that, like, what challenges do you meet kind of pushing, continuing to push yourself with these dishes? Well, you know, mo most challenging myself and Genevieve also helps me challenge myself yeah. you know she's always pushing me to like to make a, a vegetarian dish that's Filipino and it's got to be Filipino it's got to have ingredients it's got to be somewhere like regional it's got to have a Filipino name yeah. the radish dish in the Labanos with uh, burnt coconut yeah. crema pistachio I was uh, watching videos on the internet watching people from modern out burning coconuts yeah. like on the streets they would just blend it and then they would use it as a marinade for their chicken lamb and it, it was just, it would just give off this like really dark soup looking uh yeah. nilaga beef nilaga uh -huh. yeah. and i thought that was pretty that was pretty awesome because i've, I've never seen anything like that yeah. before and so we tried it here and it's amazing the colors like of the, the burnt coconut with the, with the cream and then with the pistachio texture sweet sort of earthy chocolatey and it's vegetarian, yeah. you know, it's, it's awesome.
Holy sh Like one thing I noticed about Bad Saints food is that there's a flavor there that is very familiar. Um, even though the dish doesn't look like something I remember or something that I know. But like when you hear that people are lining up for Filipino food, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Uh, it makes me feel, um, I'm sure my mom would be proud of me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's all because of her, you know, like she passed away four years ago before the restaurant opened and she would have seen this today. I, she'd be so, so proud of me. I want this, I want Filipino food to always be the best version of itself. You know, we've only scratched the surface here.